عامل بن وهب بن عبد المعناف بن زهرة بن كلا. Get to the Prophet in Kila. That's the same lineage of the Prophet from her father's side. From her mother's side, she gets, gets to the Prophet lineage in Qusayl. They're all gets related. It's all pure really lineage. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these are all, all the lineages of the people around the Prophet Sallallahu It's amazing. If you look at them, they all connect back with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then, uh, he says, uh, they get married, he spends the night. The next day he comes out, the same woman from Bani Sa'ad sees him and doesn't pay any attention. He's a man. He said, what happened? Yesterday you were dying for me, today no attention. He said, there was a light in your face. Which my brother has been talking about this light in the face of the final prophet. That's no longer there. That is Nur Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jabir uh, radiallahu anhu asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, oh messenger of Allah, what was the first thing that God created? It's a hadith. What is the first thing that Allah created before he created anything? He said, oh Jabir, the first thing that Allah created, he created the light of your prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his light. And then he said, the loh is from my light, the qalam is from my light, the heaven is from my light, the earth is from my light, all of these from Nur Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the light that came in and went into the forehead of Adam alayhi salam, from Adam alayhi salam into Shays and, the, and all the way to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why all the miracles of the prophets is the miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it's from his light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, no, you don't have the light anymore. Because it was transferred. That they were just vehicle carrying that. Abdullah, after 10 days, he travels to Syria and on the way he gets sick near Medina. He stays with his maternal uncles from Beni Najjar and after a few days, he gets severe, his sickness gets more severe and he dies and he gets buried there. Amina is there. All she has is a goat and a servant, Um Ayman. That's all he left. A goat and a servant. And this is, this, this is how Allah, nobody, nobody can direct it like that Allah can direct. You can't write a script like this. Wallah, you can't write a script like this. Look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu It's just amazing. Nobody can say, oh, he wasn't. I mean, look at all the Prophets. Musa alayhi salam, what happened to his mom? He was like, should I throw this baby in the, in the river? Who's going to take care of it? She's perturbed. She's worried. Doesn't know that Musa, who he's going to become. Isa, alayhi salam, the same thing. He's born. The mother is worried. He goes, listen, I'm not a pure woman. I have a baby. How am I going to face the people? Allah gives the worry to those people. Allah gives the worry to those people that he loves. So she is there. This is the night, the night of the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal. But she has no pain. Um Ayman says, are you sure you didn't miscalculate your, that the baby is due now? Because there's no pain. She said, wallahi, I didn't miscalculate it. I didn't miscalculate it. And if you look at the, at the shama'il, at the description of this Um Ayman, the slave woman, you'll be amazed how beautifully she was described. She had amazing akhlaq, she had a beautiful face, she had patience, she had amazing character. And then Fuwayba, who is the slave of Abu Lahab, comes in there to help. Three women have nothing of the dunya. Zilch, nada, two of them are slaves, and Amina has, is left with nothing from her husband. And they're about to, she's about to give birth, to the best of creation, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there's nothing in the house. All the other houses in Mecca, music and drums and parties, because they are having babies and in the house of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nothing. No music and no drums and nobody cares because he's the orphan of Bani Hashim. But Allah has written the script differently. They don't know. They don't know what's going to happen. Had they known, subhanallah. So, she gives birth on the 12th of Rabi al-Awwal. When he comes in, Abdullah al-Ansari said, everybody was quiet. The Mecca was quiet, nobody cared that the orphan is being born. But Abdullah al-Ansari and his Kashf al said, the earth knew. 
So the earth shouted to the heavens that everything in the heavens and the earth shook. And he said, who is better now? Who is better now? The heavens? Or the, because the earth is the lowest of the world, is the dunya. He said, who is better now that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has put his foot on me? Because the road of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest, the pinnacle of creation in all of the existence of God. It's better than the Arsh of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He comes in, they're trying to cut the umbilical cord, it's already cut. He smells like musk. They're amazed. It's al insan al kamil Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next day, Abu Lahab comes in. He said, I want my slave back. The way back. Because my wife, Um Jamil, Um Jamil didn't have any children and she was very jealous. And she said, listen, she's feeding him. Just give me one more day. I heard there's a tribe that's coming from Bani Sa'ad. And they're taking the children. And this was, this was the orth, the custom of the Arabs. They used to give their children to take them to the desert. Better weather, better language. And they'll grow up stronger. And they will take the child. He said, listen, I don't know if they're going to come or not. It's all news. But I need my servant. My wife is giving me a hard time. He said, just give me till tomorrow. The way about if you look at her description, they say she was so beautiful, stunningly beautiful. She was one of the most chaste women, the most purest woman in Mecca. How Allah is choosing these people to be her. And she said, when I put him in my arms and put my breast in his mouth, she said, I feel like every single cell of my body started to move and become alive. And I couldn't take my eyes off him. I fell in love with him. I didn't want to let him go. I don't want to go to the house of Abu Lahab. I can't be away from this child. A caravan is leaving Bani Sa'ad and it's coming toward Mecca. In this caravan there are four people, a family of four. An amazing family. Harith, Halima with their two children, Abdullah and Zuwayba, which is known as Shema as well. They're coming towards Mecca but they don't, they're very poor. They have a land that they have bad luck with the land. They said when every land is flourishing, our land is dry. And now there's a famine, there's drought in this year. This land is going to be even more dry. They have a she camel that's very skinny and barely gives any milk for them to survive. And they have a donkey that's very skinny and limp. They come in with the caravan. The caravan People are very annoyed with him because the Abdullah, his son, is very is crying all the time because she doesn't have enough milk to give him, and the the animals are very slow, so they can't keep up with the other animals. So they're like, "Come on, can you speed it up? We're going to be late. We're trying to get to Mecca to get these children." They're very embarrassed. They're humiliated. But at one point, they get to Mecca. The rest of the caravan they get there earlier, obviously because of. They are having better animals. When they get in there, all the children are gone. So they go to the house of rich and famous. It's the same. Dunya hasn't changed. Wallah is the same exact dunya. From then to now, all this is standard of living. It's not your standing, it's standard with al living, al hayy. It's the standard of living. That's what people are, are judging everybody by. So they go to these houses and they get all the children of rich and famous to take him back. When she gets there, there's nobody. She goes to every house, we don't have any children. And everybody says, make sure you don't go to that house. Because that's the house of the orphan of Abdullah. Didn't leave anything behind. His father is dead. Grandfather doesn't have anything. Don't go to that house. Everybody's warning everybody about that house. So inside the house is just three women sitting. Waiting for somebody to knock on the door. To take this boy. But nobody wants him. Nobody. They all want that. The famous, the, the rich. Those that we don't even know their names anymore. La ilaha illallah. The whole day passes by. Finally, after a few hours, the two, and this is initiative, the two slaves, they say, let's go out. Nobody's coming to the house. Let's go out try to get somebody to take this child. Look at that. We can't look at Amina. She's, she's getting depressed that nobody wants her child. So they go outside, they bring like three, four of these women, they say, can you take this child? When they walk in, they say, isn't this the house of the orphan of Abdullah? They say, yes, it is. 
Well, he doesn't cheat. They don't have anything of the jinn. I said, no, they don't. But he's a beautiful child. Give it a chance. They don't even talk to him. They make a U-turn, walk out of the house. They said all three of them start crying. The unwanted baby in Mecca. Nobody wants him. It's late, becomes night. Um Amen said, one more try. Let's not give up. One more try. Let's go outside, me and you, Thueba. Let's go and get somebody. They go out and the description that Um Amen gives is stunning. See that went out. And I saw this woman. I saw this woman so tall. So beautiful. I thought she was a queen. I said, she can't be a babysitter. She can't be here to take the children. She must be a queen from a royal family. Who is she? It was Halima. She said it was so easy to approach her. So we went to her. I said, would you please come and look at this child? Just look at him. They said when she looked, she had the most amazing smile. And if you look at the shamayah that they give of her, about her face, you fall in love. A woman of beauty, a woman of, her name is Halima, forbear. Come, just check it out. You don't have to take him. You don't have to take him. Just come and check him out. Just come and hold him. She said, okay. So she goes to the house and holds the baby. She said, Wallahi, I don't know what happened to me, but I felt like my inside, there was a revolution of love inside of me. Just holding this baby boy. She held him and she said, I, I had barely had milk for my own child. I always crying that I have enough milk. Milk was flowing from my breast. And then she said, she looked at him, she couldn't take her eyes off him, and he fell asleep while drinking milk. What an amazing scene for a mother to have a child breastfeed and then the child falls asleep in her arm. It's just an amazing, beautiful, beautiful thing. And then she said something amazing. She said, and then I looked up, and I looked at the house, and I saw nothing in this house. Nothing of the dunya. And I said to myself, Halima, you didn't come here to pick a child. You came here to get a child who can support you, so that their family can give you some money. Look at your state. You have nothing. You don't even have milk to drink. And you're going to get an orphan? Is that what you're going to do? She said that, that in the shaitan, you are the fakr. Shaitan, you will make you fear poverty. Right? <coughs> So she said, I'm sorry. I would love to take him, but I can't. We are, we are in a desperate situation. I said, we understand. She leaves. She goes back. That night, she couldn't sleep. The whole night, she was rolling from one side to another. And she was weeping. Harith, they had a love marriage. Harith was in love with her. I said to her, the next morning, they got up and said, listen, I've been married with you ever since. I've never seen you cry. You never cry. You're known in the community as a smiling woman. You always smile. You're a happy-go kind of person. What happened to you? What happened? Why are you crying? The whole night you were turning from one side to another and you were, your tears were coming from your eyes. He said, she said that, I don't know. I saw this child. There's something about him. Allah, there's something about him. But they don't have anything of the dunya. And he said, listen, why don't we go back and look at it one more time? And maybe there's barakah in it. Maybe there'll be some barakah for us. They don't have anything, maybe there'll be barakah. She said, well, I feel like that. I feel like it. So they go back. They go back. And she said, let me hold the child one more time. Ish, love. And this is okay. So she holds the child and she said, our husband comes and goes, listen, maybe there will be better kindness. Take the child. Look at that face. Look at that light in the face. 
She said, we'll take this job. You know what uh, Amina said? She said, you know, if you don't want to take it, leave him. Because I heard a voice that somebody from Bani Sa'ad will come and take him by the name of Abu Zuwayba. <laughs> she said, this is my husband, Abu Zuwayba, and we are from Bani Sa'ad. This is God's script. You can't write it. Nobody can write this. Only Allah can do this. So they take the child. When they go back, the caravan leaves at Fajr time. They leave after Dhuhr because of this whole going back and forth. Before the evening, they catch up to the caravan. Say, is this the same donkey? We can't control him. Is this the same camel? And is this me? I have so much milk. The, the, the Harris said, we have to put something to cover the camel because the milk was dripping. We couldn't control it. And they knew it was about, there's something about this child. And he said, please, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody about this. Because Hassad, because people will envy us. They catch up with the caravan. And when they catch up with them, say, oh, you got the orphan of Beni Hashim? You got the orphan boy? No, 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 you made a mistake. Take him back. It's going to ruin your life. You won't get anything from this. And they say, you guys stay, even if you're willing to give you a ride on one of our fast camels to take him back and return the boy. They say, no, 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 we're okay. We made a promise and we want to keep our promise. Wafa, you know, Arab had wafa. Their life changes. Everything changes. Their land the year of drought is flourishing. The animals, everywhere they go, they come back full of men. Every other animal come back empty. <coughs> SubhanAllah, the barakah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, Wallahi, what we are lacking, we are not embracing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are having problem in our household. The household is a maskan in Arabic. Maskan is a place for what? For Sakina. And Sakina comes from Allah directly into the Muskan. The Muskan that doesn't have the love of the Messenger of Allah is not going to have any Sakina. You're going to have problem with your children. You're going to have problem with your spouses. You're going to have problem with your bills. You're going to have problem with everything in that household. The heart that is not filled with the love of uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a, is a heart that is destroyed. And we have to embrace him, just like Halima Sa'diyah. We have to embrace the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our lives and watch the barakah descend on us. Watch the barakah in our lives, in our children's lives, in our spouses, in our businesses, in our homes. Watch everything fall into place. If you put the, the man in the place that he belongs, in the heart, Say, this is amazing verse. The word qul is amazing when you see it in the Quran because the Prophet didn't have to say it. He didn't have to say it. Because Jibreel is saying, say, tell them. But this is the trustworthiness of your Prophet وسلم, that he didn't omit anything from the Quran. He could have said, in kuntum Allah. If you love Allah, then follow me. He said, no, qul. I'm just saying exactly what Allah is saying. Allah is telling you. Allah is telling the Prophet to tell us. Say, if you love Allah, if you're claiming that you love Allah, then follow me. Follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yaghfir lakum zunubakum. Allah will forgive you. Yuhbibkum Allah wa yaghfir lakum zunubakum. Allah will love you. You want the love of Allah? Follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he will love you. Nobody is worth falling in love with in this world. Nobody except the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Allah loves him. If he's good enough for Allah, it's got to be good enough for us. It's got to be good enough for us. The Messenger of Allah, the best of creation. If you're going to fall in love with anybody, fall in love with Muhammad Al-Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And watch your life changes. And watch how everything will change. Everything will change, everything will fall into the place, inshallah wa ta'ala. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين. The love of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is essential in our religion. It's not a juzi, it's a kuli. It's essential that we all love him. The um, this ummah was in love with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, was in love with the Sahaba, was in love with the ulama, with the awliya who reminded him of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Wallahi. One of the, the Persian poets said, he said, Ya Rasulullah, chi boshad, chun saga ashaba kaf, da khile jannat shavam, dar zamrei ahbaba tu. O Messenger of Allah, it, could it be that I enter paradise with your companions, just like the dog of the companions of the cave, entering paradise with the companions of the cave, with ashaba kaf? We know the ashaba kaf, they were the men of Angelus, right? With their dog. We don't separate the Ashab al-Kaf from the dog. He became part of the Ashab al-Kaf in the Quran. The dog became part of the Ashab al-Kaf and going to paradise with them. And he's saying, Oh Messenger of Allah, could I enter paradise with your companion just like the dog of the Ashab al-Kaf would enter with them into paradise? And if the dog of the companions of the cave goes to Jannah and I go to hell, how could that be? He's the dog of the companions of the cave and I'm the dog of your companions. I'm the dog of your companions. This is the love that they had for the Prophet wasallam. <coughs> this is the love that they had for the Prophet wasallam. All of, all of these people, look at and read the history of, of, the, of the Ummah. They were all ushak, they were all lovers of the Prophet And they had everything. Even if they didn't have anything of the material standard, they had the high standard with the living, with al hayy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the love of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because of the, you know, uh, like Iqbal said, Ye jahan cheese kiya, hey, lo ho kalam tere hai. Well, if, you, if you put the wafa of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in your, in your heart, if you love the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will have Allah, forget about the world. He's saying, Allah is saying that you will have the loo, you will have the kalam. You write your own destiny. Whatever you want, I'll give you. Love the Prophet, I'll give you whatever you want. Right? خودی کو کربلن اتنا کہ ہر تقدیر سے پہلے خدا بندے سے خود پوچھے بتا تیرے رضا کیا ہے that you should elevate yourself to a point that Allah will ask you tell me how would you like me to write your destiny that's the love of the message of Allah your destiny will be written in accordance to your liking because your liking will become Allah's liking because you are drowning in the sea of love of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is the month of Rabi'ul Awad. This is New Year commitment, brothers and sisters. New Year's commitment should be that we fill our lives with the love of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we make our household houses. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would walk in, he would, we wouldn't be ashamed of showing him our houses. And he wouldn't be ashamed of entering our houses. This should be the year. We can't wait for next year and the next year. That we fill our hearts our homes, our businesses, all around the Prophet Sallallahu The love of the Messenger of Allah, Wallahi, you put that, everything will fall into place. Everything in your life will fall. You have any anxiety, you have any problem with your work, at the house, with your children, with your spouses, put the love of the Messenger of Allah in your heart and watch everything changes. Watch everything changes. The heavens and the earth changed when he came into the earth. The whole paradigm shifted when the earth became the highest place on the, on the creation of Allah. The lowest place. They called the earth the toilet of creation. That's what they used to call it. The toilet of creation. If creation is a castle, the earth is a toilet. And yet, he came into this world and his rawda is the highest place in the creation of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah can elevate you. But you have to have the love of the Messenger of Allah in your heart. Not as a lip service, because this Ummah, we're becoming a slogan in lip service Ummah. Not a t-shirt that you wear that I love the Prophet No, his akhlaq. Take on his akhlaq. Take on his character. The way he dealt with people. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
Wafa. What is the wafa? He waited three days for a man, for an appointment. Three days. When a man came and said, why did you do that? He said, wafa. I give him my word. We don't even we don't even keep appointments. We don't even call to cancel an appointment. Akhlaq of the Prophet sallallahu The inward character should manifest outward, not the outward manifest. You know, try to get the outward going, and then the inward we have bad akhlaq, bad character. It's the inward character of the Prophet sallallahu that at one point it will permeate you. Your outward will become like your inward, but start from the heart. Start from the heart, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Astaghfirullah wa astaghfirullah wa na'udhu billahi min shurubi anfasina wa min sayyati amalina man yahdi illa fala mudilla lahu man yurri fala hadiya lahu wa shinu an la ilahi illa Allah wa ahdihu la sharika lahu wa shinu muhammad rabdahu rasuluhu arsalahu bil huda bashirun wa nadhirun qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi Qur'an al-Majid inna Allah wa malaykatu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayyuhu ladhina amalu salli alayhi wa sallim wa taslim wa alayhi wa salli ala sayyina muhammadin abdiq wa rasulika nabiyyina wa nilu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nilu alayhi wa rahmatu 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 wa qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arhamu wa matibu wa matibu wa bakru wa shadun fi amri lahi wa maru wa sallahu wa mahayyan wa thman wa akhtu wa ma'ali wa fatu wa sayyidu wa sayyidu wa ahli jannah wa hasan wa hasan sayyidu wa shadu wa ahli jannah wa hamza wa sallallahu wa sallu rasuli khayr wa qurubi qalli thumma ladhini yalunahum thumma ladhini yalunahum إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القرب وينحن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي إذا لم يعرفكم تذكرون فاذكروا لي أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وذكروا الله أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة